Savage Nation. You know, when I entered radio in 1994, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Well, I don't know if I really didn't have any idea, because the first night I did radio, I swore I'd never do radio again. I encountered the bigotry of the liberals of the Bay Area. When I filled in for an overnight host, and I simply expressed my opinions on the dangers of affirmative action, the dangers of political correctness and such, the hatred that came back at me from the bigots called liberals was so overwhelming I decided I would never do radio again. However, the station then made me an offer I couldn't refuse, and the rest is history, and I'm here 15 years later. But little did I think that in the year 2009, on the 5th of May, I would be shocked with uh, uh, the reading of uh, the Drudge Report that I was banned from entering the United Kingdom along with murderers and terrorists. I said, this can't be true. It's impossible. Well, here it is true, and here it is months later, and the corrupt Gordon Brown government, the same government that released the Lockerbie bomber to a hero's welcome in, in Libya, the same corrupt government that put me on a list refuses to take me off the list. Of course, he doesn't represent all of England. In fact, he probably represents 20, 25 percent of the people of England. Most of the English people don't approve of his government. They're going to throw him out at the latest next May, and there will be a conservative government in England, no doubt. And I'm hopeful that if it takes that long, I will then have my honor restored and my name restored. Of course, the dishonor here goes to Jackie Smith. The dishonor goes to Gordon Brown. The dishonor goes to liberalism in general for having fallen to this level. However, I also didn't think that I would have the distinct honor of being invited to present my viewpoint by the Cambridge Union Society in Cambridge, England. The Cambridge Union was founded in 1815 and is the world's oldest debating society. Now, those of you who love talk radio should understand what this means. Okay, now you're used to people in talk radio, some of whom are very glib, and some of whom uh, express opinions that you agree with, and yet they don't have the first idea what debating really is. Uh, I do. So the Cambridge Union wrote me a letter. They say the following. The Cambridge Union has been following you... With great interest in recent weeks, we understand that you are fighting to overturn a ban on entering the U.K. imposed by the Home Office and former Home Secretary Jackie Smith. The decision to ban you has caused quite a stir, and we are keen to know how your situation progresses, especially now that Jackie Smith has resigned from Cabinet. The Cambridge Union was founded in 1815. I'm reading a letter now from them. The Cambridge Union was founded in 1815 and is the world's oldest debating society. We have enjoyed the presence of many high-profile speakers, including American presidents Ronald Reagan and Theodore Roosevelt and Nobel Peace Prize winner Henry Kissinger. We understand that your radio show, The Savage Nation, is the third most popular show in America. And although controversial, we think that you are more qualified than anyone to talk about the subject of political correctness in America and Britain. We write to invite you to speak at a debate on the subject of political correctness at the Cambridge Union Society. The debate will be entitled, This House Believes Political Correctness is Sane and Necessary. And we would be delighted if you, Michael Savage, were available to speak in opposition of the motion. The debate will take place in Cambridge on Thursday, 15th, October 09. You could either address the Society by live video link or pending any revisions of your legal status in person. We look forward to receiving your reply. Best wishes, uh, JD and JL. The letter is up on michaelsavage.com. The question to you, the audience of the Savage Nation, there are two questions, rather. One, should I accept this offer? Because I know there are pitfalls. And two, should I accept it? How will they defend political correctness in order to make me look bad? 1-800-449-8255 is the phone number. The letter is up on michaelsavage.com. And I want to remind you, you still have an opportunity to own the classic first edition of Band in Britain available at this time only on my website because the New York publishing houses will not publish this book. They have also banned me on Publishers Row. I have been banned by Fox News, CNN, ABC, CBS, and NBC. They will talk to rapists, murderers, ball players, pigeon raisers, uh, pinheads, macrocephalics, microcephalics, but they will not talk to a man who has been banned by a Western democracy. What does that tell you about Fox News? That's a separate story. The main question to you is the one I raised. Now, a partial list of past speakers at the Cambridge Union Society contains some very distinguished people, but not some, also some not very distinguished people. I'll read you a partial list. Here are the people who have spoken there. They said 
that Reagan, Theodore Roosevelt, and, and Henry Kissinger spoke there. But they didn't add the following. Australian Prime Minister John Howard, good guy. U.S. President Ronald Reagan, great man. German Chancellor Helmut Kohl. South African President F.W. de Klerk spoke there. A Archbishop Desmond Tutu, King Hussein of Jordan, the Dalai Lama. The French politician Jean-Marie Le Pen, who you know is a right-winger. Libyan President Gaddafi spoke before the Cambridge Union. Clint Eastwood spoke. Winston Churchill, UK Prime Minister Clement Attlee, Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, and of course U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt. In either case, uh, it is a very distinguished list, and I doubt that there is a person listening to this audience that is not, let us say, who's an attorney, liberal or otherwise, who wouldn't accept this honor. But should I? And should I accept this honor? What will they throw at me in order to try to uh, trip me up? So I turn it over to you, the Savage Nation, 1-800-449-8255. What I'd like to know is how can anyone defend political correctness? I'd like to know how anyone can defend it. It's indefensible. It's, it's the opposite of political freedom. It's the opposite of freedom of speech. It's controlling language. What it boils down to is telling people you cannot say this, you cannot say that, because it uh, offends certain people. And I remind you again that... Speech that does not call for violence may be offensive, but it should never be illegal. We never would have had an American Revolution without freedom of speech, would we? Brits try to control the colonists in many different ways. Uh, the uh, freedom of speech is, is, is the essence of all of Western democracy, the core of it. Without it, Without it, my friends, there would be no freedom at all. The next the Second Amendment would be, the, would be gone next. And that's the See, if you didn't have the right to redress your grievances through freedom of speech, the First Amendment, there goes the Second Amendment, the guns. Because you wouldn't, they'd be afraid, uh, they're afraid that you'd go, let's say they try to take away your, your health care, your freedom of choice in health care, right? So you spoke out through town hall meetings. Had there been no freedom of speech, as Obama would like, through intimidation tactics, through the goon squads, through the fake environmental gangsters. Had he had more power than he had, you would not have been permitted to speak. And the debate would, it wouldn't have been uh, permitted. It would have been a Stooge-style debate, a Soviet-style debate, and there would have been no debate. It would have been fake. And they would have forced socialized medicine on America. So that's why freedom of speech is so important, which again goes to the core of this whole issue of banning Michael Savage in Britain, which is why I keep talking about it. Sure, it's about me, and sure, I want my name off the list, but sure, it's also the most important discussion that we could have this year. Because without the First Amendment, you may as well say goodbye to all the others, to the Constitution. That's if you even know what they are. And I'm not going to read them to you. I have them right here on a chart. Uh, I don't need a blackboard and chalk, because I actually was a professor. That I reserved for those who uh, never went to uh, uh, past the ninth grade. They like to have chalk and blackboards. It makes them feel powerful and important. But let's go down to the next level here. Should I accept it? And what will they say to me? Period. End of story. 1-800-449-8255. MichaelSavage.com. Questions to you. Should I accept the offer? And what will they throw at me to trip me up? The debate goes to you, the Savage Nation, back in a moment. Savage. 